Welcome to the Great Basin Prescribed Fire and Smoke Transport Briefing for Wednesday, January 18th. Over the last couple of weeks, we've continued to have very wet weather across the Great Basin. Over the last seven days, much of the heavier precipitation has been targeted into the Sierra and also across much of Utah and even southern areas of the Great Basin, also into southeast Idaho. Over the last two weeks, again, this pattern has continued with well above normal precipitation across nearly all of Utah and Nevada, the only exception being far northern Nevada and also up into Idaho, where these storms have largely missed some of the heavier precipitation. Over the last 72 hours, we've had new snowfall in the Sierra, which has totaled over one to two feet of snowfall. Also heavy precipitation into Utah, with even areas of southern Utah receiving over 12 or 18 inches of new snowfall. This heavier snowfall continued north into the Utah mountains and also up into parts of eastern Idaho. The snow depth is indicated on the right, and all areas of the Great Basin are certainly doing well with regards to snowpack. The better areas, however, are across Nevada, Utah, the Sierra, and down into Arizona, where snowpack is above 200 or 300 percent of normal. Further north, even though Idaho has not seen some of the heavier precipitation recently, snowpack is still near average for the time of year. Looking at the satellite loop from this morning, we have an exiting area of low pressure over the Rockies with still some wraparound clouds and light showers into eastern Utah. However, we have the next system moving into the Pacific Northwest, which will push across the Great Basin, bringing yet another period of snowfall to Nevada and Utah and parts of eastern Idaho tonight into tomorrow. So today, again, that system moves into northern California. By later today and tonight, it will push that precipitation into Nevada and eventually tonight and tomorrow track across the Great Basin. Transport winds will pick up a little bit ahead of this next wave into western Nevada and also still some breezy winds across parts of central and eastern Utah, especially in the higher terrain with the downslope northwest winds on the backside of the low that's exiting the area to the east. Mixing heights are generally low across the Great Basin. Relative humidity still remains high with these systems moving through, so no issues with fire potential or relative humidity. Ventilation index, we will see that decrease today in between systems with poor dispersion. As we move into Thursday, again, that system tracks eastward across the Great Basin that's moving into the west coast. So it will push much of the precipitation throughout the day on Thursday to the eastern half of the region after moving through western Nevada overnight tonight into early tomorrow. Fire potential obviously remains low. Transport winds will be picking up as this system moves through with gusty northwest winds and cooler temperatures behind the system across Nevada on Thursday. Mixing heights will improve as this system moves through throughout the day. Relative humidity still remains high on Thursday and again better dispersion with those gustier winds on the back side of the system for Nevada. As we move into Friday, this system pushes into the southeast corner of Utah, so still some lingering clouds and precipitation for Utah on Friday with drier conditions and inversions starting to set up over western areas of the Great Basin. Fire potential still remains low. Transport winds will be increased as this system moves into southeast Utah. Those gusty north to northwest winds will spread eastward into southern and eastern Nevada and much of Utah, where gusts could exceed 30 miles per hour at times. Mixing heights will be higher over Nevada and Utah and lower further north, further away of the, from this system up into Idaho. Relative humidity remains high on Friday, and again, better dispersion where those winds will be gusty and the higher transport winds in Nevada and Utah. Cooler temperatures still continue as we move through this week into this weekend. We will see those stronger inversions set up. So the coldest day of the week likely will be Friday after the system pushes through with highs only in the 20s to around freezing in many areas. And we will see these temperatures creep up a little bit through the weekend. But again, we are expecting inversions, especially over the western side of the Great Basin. The forecast clearing index for Utah, definitely higher clearing indices today over eastern Utah as that first system exits, and then higher clearing indices over western and southern Utah as we move into Thursday and Friday with this next system moving through. The three-day forecast amount of precipitation is shown here with obviously the heavier amounts of precipitation in the Sierra and also across parts of Nevada and Utah over the next 24 to 36 hours as this next system moves through. There are winter weather advisories in effect for parts of Nevada into the Great Basin, we are expecting several new inches of new snowfall, uh, certainly not as heavy as some of the storms we've recently seen. As we move into Saturday, this system exits to the east into the Rockies and the Plains with a stronger high pressure ridge building in off the west coast. 
This will bring a more prolonged period of drier conditions, especially for the western side of the Great Basin. However, it does open up parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah to sliders dropping down from the north, which will bring periodic periods of clouds and some precipitation. As we move into Sunday, the first system moves through Saturday night and Sunday, dropping down from the north and will clip Idaho and Utah with some lighter precipitation and still drier conditions out west. As we move into Monday, that strong ridge still builds in. That slider drops down into Arizona and New Mexico. However, yet another weak system dropping down from the north will affect parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah going into Monday night and Tuesday. So again, we are looking for that prolonged ridge off the west coast, at least for the next week, if not longer. So that will bring stronger inversions and air quality issues to parts of the western areas of the Great Basin. And still, at least going into the early part of next week, the northerly flow will allow systems to drop down over the eastern side of the Great Basin, bringing some periods of improved dispersion. So looking at the precipitation for days four and five, Saturday through Monday, again, just very light showers associated with these northern systems that drop down for Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah. And then days six and seven, going into the Monday through Wednesday time period, again, still some light, unsettled weather over the eastern side of the basin. And then the seven-day total precip, which also takes into account what we'll see here over the next day or two. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us from January 25th through the 31st shows cooler than normal temperatures across much of the western two-thirds of the United States and generally near normal precipitation. So we're not looking for any really big storms to affect the area through the end of the month. Again, just the lighter showers dropping down from the north over the eastern side of the basin and drier conditions to the west. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back on Monday for the latest updates.